uh, first of all, I need to thank uh, the batch of 2016 for making me believe that this was a good idea. Um, but before we start, I actually want to ask how many of us have any idea about what game theory is? Okay, just look at these people because uh, they are going to help me answer questions later. Okay, thank you. Please, you, you guys are my team and we need to cooperate. Okay, thank you. Uh, Okay, so since we're talking about uh, game theory, let's uh, try and find out what game is. Oh, now we can switch off the lights. Thank you. Yeah, so what is game and why do we care about game? So essentially game is any situation wherein a number of uh, individuals or entities participate together and the outcome or the payoff depends on the decisions made by each and every in entity or the individual which is participating in the situation and not just one individual or entity. Uh, so uh, what game theory essentially now is, it's the theory of understanding Oops, sorry, this game went bad. Um, so this is uh, the theory which tries to understand the strategic inter uh, interactions between self-interested people or entities. Now self-interested here is something, uh, refers, it, it basically refers to an individual or an entity which knows what is the best outcome for it in this particular situation. Why do we care about games? We are all uh, at one point of time or the other faced with a situation where we have to either make a decision or we have to face the repercussions or the advantages of decisions being made by the others. Uh, the classical example of game theory is the prisoner's dilemma which you guys would know but I will just try to tell you uh, something very similar which is called as the advertising dilemma. This is something very close to home. We all use uh, reagents from either of these two companies and uh, quite a, f a few of us are loyalists. We do not like to use thermoglycerol uh, but we would want to use sigma glycerol for storing our proteins. So uh, assuming that there is, a, there is an almost equal market or a, a loyal base for both these companies, what happens is these companies still fear that if the other company try to advertise more they might end up stealing their loyal customers or not. So just to maximize their gains they try and advertise more so that they can uh, attract more customers but when they are advertising they end up paying a lot of money in terms of stalls or even giving out free samples. So let's look at what happens when both the companies advertise. They pay a lot of money instead of uh, in addition to their uh, costs and end up reducing lower profits. But what happens when uh, Sigma advertises and Thermo does not? Because there is a loyal customer base, Thermo profits are, let's assume that Thermo's profits are higher than Sigma's profits and that's exactly the case when Sigma does not advertise but Thermo does. However, the most important uh, uh, outcome for both these companies would be if they did not advertise at all because there is a customer base for both of these companies and they are still going to maintain it if both these companies did not advertise at all. So in this particular situation if both these companies cooperated and did not advertise that would be the best outcome for both of them. So. Basically what I am trying to tell you is that in this situation wherein two or more players are faced with a, situ uh, with a decision making dilemma, um, game theory tells us the kind of decisions we need to make to optimize profits which are uh, beneficial to everybody. So uh, the previous, uh, previous example makes sense economically, why do we care about uh, game theory in biology? Uh, like I said, game theory mainly uh, studies the strategic interactions among self-interested participants and uh, in biology, self-replicating units or organisms interact with others and employ strategi uh, strategies for reproductive success. So 
there is interaction, there is strategy. And interactions, like we know, are the mainstay of biology and uh, most of the biological systems do not evolve in isolations. So it makes sense that there is going to be some decision-making process wherein the, these entities have to interact with each other and may have to make decisions. So the evolutionary game theory was coined, which is essentially an extension of the game theory, which is applied to the biological systems. And uh, it basically aims at uh, prediction and description of the optimum fitness of the species. How do these two uh, theories differ from each other? Game theory uh, basically takes into account the fact that the players or the entities which are participating in the game theory are rational decision makers and will do whatever they need to do for, uh, in terms of strate uh, strategies to uh, maximize their profits and minimize the losses. The one thing which is different uh, for evolutionary game theory is that the outcomes, the benefits or the payoffs are determined by the natural selection and there is no rationality involved. So any strategy which maximizes the optimum fitness of a group of individuals or a species is selected for contradictory to uh, what we generally hear uh, by the survival of the fittest which tells us or makes us assume that it's the individual fitness that matters. So essentially in the evolutionary game theory anything and everything which promises a species or a group of individuals that they as a group are going to survive better is going to be paid uh, or selected rather than anything which favors a particular individual or entity. And in a, uh, in a situation where such an equilibrium is reached, that situation is called as evolutionary stable strategy. Now in this particular uh, equilibrium, any other mutation which is introduced in this species is still not going to be able to off balance the equilibrium or the uh, adaptation that has already been included in the species. So evolutionary game theory explains a lot of things one of which is animal behavior and it is something that we see more or less on an everyday basis and there is one model which is called as the hog dove model which is generally used to represent the costs and the benefits of fighting over resources. Now hawk in this situation represents any animal which likes to fight or assert its dominance in a particular situation to the point of violence. So uh, the other uh, participant is the dove and that is any animal which decides to show aggression but does not fight. So in this situation what happens when uh, a hawk ends up interacting with a hawk? The two are going to fight and one of the hawks is uh, going to win 50% of the fights and the other hawk is going to be injured half the time. So assuming that the outcome or the payoff in this situation is V which and the payoff could be anything uh, like food or territory but because half of the organisms are losing the fight the payoff is reduced by V minus D. Now D in this case is the cost that has been incurred in the fight which could be anything in terms of energy or survival benefits. So when the two hawks fight, one wins but one loses. So the optimum outcome is only uh, V minus D by 2. But when a hawk encounters a dove, because it's an aggressor and the dove is going to back off, hawk ends up getting the entire outcome without any repercussions. And in this situation, the dove is actually not uh, winning anything, but in terms of its survival or uh, the energy cost, it's not losing anything either. What happens when uh, the two doves interact with each other? In this situation, they're just wasting time. They're not doing anything, they're just going to uh, show each other teeth or something and just going to, after some time, re uh, share the resources um, in half. So, uh, what hap how does this help in uh, deciding what's the optimum fitness favoring strategy? In a population where there are uh, more doves, the hawk strategy wins. Let's uh, equate it to something 
like in this room, if we were to make a decision, if there are many aggressors, we are going to fight a lot, break each other's heads, and maybe not find what we needed eventually. In a, uh, what happens, uh, however, in a population of hawks, the dove strategy wins. What if in this particular situation we all cooperated, considering all of us are hawks, we would actually, we can actually sit and distribute whatever we are looking for, food, territory, whatever. We can divide it in half and nobody gets injured. To go to the next slide. So, uh, what I showed you initially was at a macroscopic levels, wherein the behaviors are quite intuitive. Uh, game, evolutionary game theory has also been uh, used to explain microscopic or subcellular or cellular behaviors where cog uh, cognition does not essentially exist. So, people have been running a lot of simulations and what they have explained using evolutionary game theory is that say in case of a malignant tumor, not all tumor cells need to ac uh, acquire mutations to promote tumor growth. If uh, in a particular tumor in the micro environment, there was a division of labor wherein some cells were tumorigenic whereas other cells were just providing uh, fodder for these cells to grow where, uh, wherein you can see parasitism and uh, so basically there is a very fine equilibrium between all the participants which are uh, there in this tumor micro environment the outcome of a malignancy would require that uh, the tumor cells compete among themselves, pick up all the growth factors from uh, the bystanders or the non-tumorigenic cells, evade the uh, predators and eventually uh, turn the uh, secrete some or the other signals which convert the other cells into the tumor cells or make them more uh, angiogenic so that they can break away and metastasize. So it's the heterogeneity in uh, these conditions and the fine balance which occurs between uh, the other interactors which provides the adaptive advantage to uh, the tumors and can be uh, responsible for the malignant tumor growth. So, coming to the applications of uh, the evolutionary game theories, uh, the, just to address the previous question, the combination therapy has been used in a lot of cases wherein people are now trying to, uh, instead of uh, fighting the tumor cells, trying to reduce the heterogeneity so that uh, anything and everything which is making the cells more tumorigenic is reduced and apparently it has been quite effective. And, uh, it can also be used to determine the optimal uh, drug dosage against viruses. This is based on the assumptions that viruses make a trade-off between the, their replicative capacity and the drug resistance. So uh, what happens is when there are increased mutations in the viruses, there is increased resistance to the drugs. But that correlates with reduced replication rate in these viruses. So while uh, the general tendency is that in initial cases of any kind of infection, we load the system with quite high number of drugs. What they say in this case is quite counterintuitive. What they say is in this situation, the high dose needs to be uh, uh, given, uh, sorry, I, I just messed up here. Uh, we generally go uh, with the low dosage first and then increase the dosage if the system doesn't respond but what they say here is that if you give high dosage initially the low replication is uh, affected and then we can target or tackle the viral infection quite effectively and in the other case when the mutation rate is low there is reduced resistance and faster replication the initial drug dosage can be limited and then can be increased in the later half to tackle the infection and that's about the applications of game theory evolutionary game theory in this context and um, uh, the uh, take home message that I want to give is that uh, instead of just uh, looking at uh, um, systems in isolation if uh, the biological systems were looked at in a rather uh, combinatorial way, there are a lot of problems which can be solved. Uh, for example, in case of biofilms, there are a lot of uh, in, uh, bacteria 
some of which are actually defectors. Some of them cooperate to find the biofilms, but some of them do not do anything, but are just taking advantage of the cooperating entities. Now, in this particular situation, if some, uh, if one was to take the advantage of uh, the antibiotic resistance of the biofilms, one needs to enrich in some way the uh, the defectors so that the system can be breached and these um, biofilms can be targeted more effectively in um, terms of antibiotics uh, penetrating inside. So with that, thank you so much for your attention. That's about it.